Hey, how's everybody doing? Right? <laughs> everybody ready for the party tonight? I know I am. A few more hours left, right? All right. Um, so this is top three tips for beautiful Power Apps. Um, I'm going to cover over some design tips, um, point you to some resources, and I'm hoping to have a little bit of time for Q&A, but we'll see how that goes with only 20 minutes here. Uh, a little bit about me before I get started. My name's April Dunham. I'm a Power Apps and Flow MVP. I own a company called ThriveFest. We do a uh, Microsoft partner. We do a lot of Power Apps, SharePoint, and Flow. Um, I have a YouTube channel if you want to reach out, um, watch some videos on Power Apps and Flow. I have a blog, SharePointSiren.com. And you can find me on Twitter at April Dunham. All right. All right, so first, I want to talk about the art of the possible. So can I get a show of hands? How many of you have built an app kind of similar to what we're seeing here on the screen? OK, great, a lot of you guys. So this is, you know, there's nothing wrong with this app. This is the easiest way to get started with Power Apps by far. You can go in, start with your data, and it builds basically everything for you. It's functional, it's good, but let's all be honest, is this the most beautiful app you've ever seen? Not really. Um, it looks very Power Appsy. So today, I want to give you some thoughts and ideas how you can go from something like this to something like that. So take that same use case, a time off request, but make it look more like a native app. So you have nice visuals, uh, big text, uh, menus, all of that. So that's what the focus of today is going to be. Before I go into the first tip, I want to talk about you know, what is a beautiful app. So to, to describe this, I came up with something that I call the Power Apps Pyramid. So you can use this as a framework for building beautiful Power Apps. And in the base of this pyramid is performance. Now, you might be wondering, like, this is a design talk. Why are you talking about performance? Well, you know, have you heard that, you know, she's beautiful on the outside but ugly on the inside? Same thing with your Power Apps, right? <laughs> you can build the most beautiful Power App in the world, but if it takes five minutes for that to load, no one's going to use it. So that's why performance is so important. Okay. Now, I'm not going to be talking on that so much today because this is really look and feel based. But if you're interested in some more performance tips, check out my session tomorrow. I'll be covering that as well. Building on that, so if you have a nice performant app, you need to have a good user experience. So what this means is, is your app easy to use? Is it intuitive? Is it accessible? Is it engaging? That's all what user experience is. And then the icing on the cake of that is branding. So if you have a performant app and it's easy to use, what bells and whistles can you add? Can you have nice visuals, good text, and color scheme? That's the branding aspect. So if you remember the acronym PUB, everyone loves going to their favorite PUB, you'll remember the Power Apps Pyramid and your framework for building a well-designed app. All right. All right. So with that, let's go on to my first tip. So I don't know about you, but when I'm building a power app, I feel like an artist, right? I feel like I'm building, you know, creating a beautiful piece of art. So what does an artist need? They need a muse. They need inspiration. So that's my first tip to you. Get inspired. What is possible with power apps? And some tips to help you get inspired. Uh, the first is start with the power apps templates. So let me just switch over to my computer here, and I'll showcase those templates for you. This is a great way to figure out, whoops. <laughs> Maybe not. There we go. Oh, oh. flashing. <laughs> Technical difficulty. But this is a great way. Have ever you guys been to make.powerapps.com and clicked on the Create tab? So if you did, you might have scrolled down, if we, and I'll just talk through it if we can't get this figured out, and um, looked at these different tips available. So this is a great way to see you know, what is Microsoft doing with their templates? How are they building their apps and working through it? So explore those templates and look through. And the cool thing about these is you don't have to actually create the app. There's a preview option. So you can click Preview, and it'll walk you through the design of the app itself so you can get an idea of how you can make it work and, and really overhaul the design of your app. Um, that's fine. That's cool. Um, so again, just go through that on your own. Uh, look through those templates. Um, the other one is the Microsoft Employee Experience Starter Kit. Um, I don't know if any of you go to the Power Apps community calls that they have every month. But if you do, this was actually demoed um, by someone from Microsoft on the call a few months ago. And it was a pretty cool app. Microsoft had this initiative where they wanted to have you know, employee engagement applications. And they used Power Apps for that. 
So they created several different applications, kind of what you're seeing here on the left, um, several different ones. One for a time off, so that screenshot we saw at the beginning, that was actually a Microsoft Power App that they built for their employees. And they built some for Kudos and a conference app, all these cool apps. Well, the response when they demoed this on the community call was so big that they released these so you can download them and use them in your environment. So just go to the search for Microsoft Employee Starter Kit or download these slides after the session, and you'll have a link directly to that. And you can look through those, and they have really cool designs. And the big thing about their designs is they're consistent and they're clean. So if I can leave you with anything, consistency and making it clean and non-cluttered, that's what you're aiming for with your design. The next is uimovement.com. So uh, one of my friends and fellow power addicts, Geetha, actually told me about this. So when you're looking for inspiration, don't stick yourself just to power apps and looking for power apps example. Because when you're building a power app, you're really just building a mobile application within the power apps framework. So UI Movement is a great site to go to, and it shows you examples of different applications. So if you're wanting to do something like, hey, what are some ideas for a loading screen? You can filter it and see loading screens and different ideas there. And the last tip to get inspired is the Power Addicts community. So I know some I have some fellow Power Addicts out here in the crowd today. So we're just a group of people that are passionate about the Power Platform and Power Apps. And if you go to Twitter and just search for the hashtag Power Addicts, you'll see all of us posting examples of apps we're working on. And we're ready and willing to help if you have any questions. So definitely check that out for some inspiration. All right, the next tip I have is to use the HTML control. So if you look at this app on the right, again, my friend Geetha actually created this. She's using the HTML control all throughout this application. So these vacation days where it's filled in like that, that's the HTML control. If you look at the top, you see that kind of header? It looks a little bit different than the standard Power Apps header. Do you see that little shadow kind of at the end? That's called a box shadow, and that's using the HTML control. Um, now, I don't want this to scare you, like, hey, I'm not a developer. Or how am I supposed to use the HTML control in my app? Because there's actually tools that you can use that will generate HTML and CSS for you. So you don't have to know all the logistics of creating this. You can go, and I, I referenced two here, but there's a lot more. So go to one of those websites, and like, if you want a box shadow, so something like what Geetha did here at the top, you can click on box shadows on that website, and say, this is what I want. It'll show you a visual cue of how your box shadow is looking. And just click the Generate button, and that will give you the HTML that you need. And all you have to do is copy and paste that into the HTML control of your Power App, and you have a nice box shadow or a gradient effect like you see here. That, those tools will do all of that for you. So again, if you're not a developer, you can still use the HTML control in Power Apps to give it a nice visual oomph to your app. And I want to focus a lot on my last tip here, and that's to Marie Kondo your apps. OK, have you guys heard of Marie Kondo, hopefully? Some of you? All right. If you haven't, um, she has a Netflix series. And so her big thing is helping people reduce clutter. And she says, she's famous for saying, if it doesn't spark joy, then toss it out, right? So same concept applies to your Power Apps when you're designing those. Uh, clutter is the enemy of good design. So hopefully you can remember that. Um, when you're building your apps. I've seen, I've worked with a lot of different companies helping them with their Power Apps, and that's probably the most consistent thing I see is they're very cluttered. A common use case for this is a form. So a lot of people are using Power Apps to replace InfoPath, right? So you have long, lengthy forms of input information that you need to get from your users. And a lot of people will just put that on a page, and you have endless scrolling throughout your app <laughs> to fill in all this information. Now, that to me is cluttered. And you know, the user doesn't know, like, hey, does this form ever end? I'm just scrolling and scrolling, like, how much until I'm done? So a better way around that would be to utilize tabs. So you can break out your form in small chunks and utilize tabs kind of like what you see over here. So you, know, you have your home. In this case, it's used for a menu concept. But you can use that also for a form. So have, you know, break it out into reasonable sections. Like, hey, this is information about myself. This is information about my company. Break it out. And so there's no scrolling required, but you just, and it, you can even have a progress bar that says, okay, here's step one of what you're filling out. Click next, and then you're on step two. So definitely something to keep in mind. 
Another big one's flyout menus. So a common clutter is, you know, you need to navigate to different pieces of your app, and so you'll have a bunch of things on the screen to get to it, and that really clutters it up. Instead, you can use a flyout menu, which is what they're using here. So if you've ever opened up a website on your mobile phone, you're probably familiar with that three little line icon up there. It's called the hamburger menu, is what us devs and geeks call it. Um, but essentially, you just click on it, and it shows a menu of other options to navigate you throughout your app. That really helps clean up the app and makes it more visually appealing. Another big one is visuals in place of text. So in this case, we are, we're selecting a type of kudos in this screenshot. I could just have the text, thank you, and learn more. But that's not very visually appealing, right? Adding an image goes a long way to show the user what you're trying to do. So the more images you can add, the better. And then lastly, use components for reusability. Um, have any of you used components in your Power Apps or heard of them? OK. So if you haven't, a component is just a way to create a reusable control in your Power Apps. So in this case, I'm saying consistency is key, right? And I want to have a menu on each page. Well, if I'm not using a component and I want this menu and I have, let's say, 20 screens on my Power App, well, the next time I need an update to that menu, maybe I want to change the color, I'm having to go into 20 screens and make sure that I change the color. Now, it's easy for anyone to forget a screen, and then now you have inconsistency in your app. You have one screen with these different colors or different size, or maybe you're adding an item to the menu, and it's not there on one screen. The easiest way to make users uh, you know, abandon your app besides performance is lack of consistency, right? It's like, hey, like, why, this is buggy. Why, when I go to this screen, don't I see the option for this menu? So how do you get around that? That's with components. So the component allows you to go in, define your menu in this case that I just described in one location, and you just add that component itself to your different screens in your app. And then if I ever need to update that, I just go to the component layer, add my menu item or change the color, and everywhere that I'm using that component in my app will be updated automatically. So components are a lifesaver. Um, right now, I believe they're still in preview. If I'm wrong, someone correct, correct me. But I think they're going to be released publicly very soon. So definitely start looking into components and replacing things like these menus um, in your application so that you reduce your load and can easily update your app. All right. OK. So I know I, I, I couldn't really do some demos because of the screen issue. But so that's good because I'll have time for questions and answers. So hopefully I have a lot of this. So I want to leave you with some resources. Uh, the first, obviously, if you're going to be sticking around till tomorrow and you want to learn more about this in detail with some demos, check out my session tomorrow. Uh, the next, if you want to learn about components, go to that bit.ly. This is pretty cool. Microsoft has put out a GitHub. And they have a bunch of different component examples that you can just download and implement in your app. So that menu that we saw earlier, um, that's a component that you can download and put into your app. And you don't have to do any kind of customization. Um, free GIFs and SVGs. I didn't really touch on this too much, but you can have GIFs or GIFs. I don't know if, where you lie on the GIF or GIF debate. Um, but you can use those in your applications. Those are commonly used for like a loading message. And a site that I like to point people to is loading.io, because you can just download a bunch of free uh, GIFs to use in your app. Uh, again, for design and for uh, inspiration, go to that UI movement site. Um, and I actually have my own personal GitHub, where I have several different um, examples of Power Apps, including some SVGs and stuff that you can use in your app. So just you can go that there. And my YouTube and blog. And I talked about the Power Addicts earlier. But some specific people I want to call out from the design perspective are Geetha, so GSI Ved, uh, Yusuf, and Alan Chai. They do a lot from the design uh, standpoint of Power Apps and have a lot of good samples out there for you to reference. Okay. Um, anyone else? I can leave it on that slide there for a minute. So we have about five minutes um, for questions and answers. So I couldn't really do the demos. Does anyone have anything at all? If not, um, feel free to, don't forget to do it the feedback. But um, I will be here sticking around for a little bit if you do want to ask me a question personally. So that's all I had today. <laughs> Thanks.